guys and welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be filming my july wrap up i can't believe it is already the end of july um this month has gone by so quickly and so has the summer and i'm a bit sad about it but i'm also really excited because a lot of really fun things are going to happen this year so i'm really excited also i just wanted to mention i'm filming this kind of vlog style this is just one of those days where i'm so busy and i don't have the time or energy to kind of set up my lights and make a sit down video like super proper and be really put together because I'm not um, I'm currently getting ready to move into my apartment so a lot of things have been happening my room is a mess and I just didn't want to show you guys that because you don't you don't need to see my mess um, but I thought I would go through the books that I did read in July and I hope you guys enjoy so a lot of these I read during some of my vlogs so I'm not gonna be going into depth for all of them just because I've already said kind of my thoughts on them over there but I will start going through what I read. So the first book that I read in the month of July, what month is it? So the first book that I read in the month of July was The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. This is a retelling of The Little Mermaid and it is supposed to have a feminist twist on the story of The Little Mermaid. And I love The Little Mermaid, as many people know, so I was really excited to get into this one. Um, but this was just honestly disappointing. I wanted a lot more from it than I did get. This follows the pretty basic story of The Little Mermaid um, with her father who does not approve of her wanting to be a human and like wanting to visit the human world and all of that and he is really really abusive and verbally and physically and just really a disgusting person. He was horrible um, but it was supposed to I think take the whole tale and turn it on its head but I don't really feel like it captured that. I feel like this was pretty standard The Little Mermaid with just an underlying tone of femininity, femininity, feminism and I don't really feel like it reached where I wanted it. I wanted it to be powerful and for her to realize she didn't need to do anything for this guy. She didn't need to be a human. Um, she didn't need him to love her. Um, also he was trash in my opinion so Ooh, it was just not great. I just didn't love this. I wish I did because um, this cover is gorgeous and I just I love The Little Mermaid but this was definitely kind of a fail and I think I gave this two out of five stars. Yeah, this just was not my jam but I will keep it. <laughs> I, this is why I'm a book hoarder because I'll keep it even if I didn't like it because look at this cover and like look at it naked like I read during this month was Aquacorn Cove by Katie O'Neill. That's funny, Louise O'Neill, Katie O'Neill. And this is, I've talked about in my vlog channel, but this is about a girl who goes to her old hometown that has been recently devastated by this really bad storm. So she's going to help clean up and help the people um, kind of rehabilitate their town. And while she's there, she finds a little aquacorn, which is like a sea unicorn. And she takes care of it and she learns all about um, the sea and becomes close to the sea. There's some great um, female female romance in here There's some really great information about protecting the earth and protecting the oceans and what you can do to prevent You know ruining the oceans with all the pollution that we do as humans um, And just it was just honestly so precious the little girl was so adorable Illustrations were gorgeous and just the whole vibe that the story gave was just really cute So I was so happy to receive this on NetGalley for review. So this comes out. Let me make sure I know when This comes out October 16th. So definitely go check it out it is a graphic novel and I absolutely devoured it I'm for sure gonna go buy myself a copy. But yeah, it's gorgeous. So cute I can't wait for the next volume and I hope you guys go check it out because it was a great just sweet tale that adds some really good information I think to many different ages. The next book that I read was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This is about a girl who is not really good at love. She doesn't really ever get into relationships. She doesn't really know how to do it um, and she's also on the autism spectrum. She has Asperger's, what was formerly known as Asperger's and she just has a difficult time with that. So her parents give her a lot of pressure to find a husband and make babies. And so she decides to go on to a site to find an escort to teach her how to be a good like girlfriend or wife or whatever um, and teach her all the things about sex and relationships and different things like that. And so she meets this guy and obviously it evolves from just a partnership into 
maybe some love and I really enjoyed this I loved the representation in here I loved the characters I thought they all had really great flaws um, but they were definitely likable and I don't know this was just really special I talked about this more I think on my vlog channel but or my blog channel, my vlog. Um, but this was just a really sweet read. It read really quickly and I think it just, it was a really interesting take on a romance and I'm glad that people are adding more representation within their love stories because that's important. The next book that I read was an arc that I received from NetGalley and this was Rad Girls Can by Kate Schatz. This is a kind of collection of different short stories about women that are kind of forgotten some that aren't, but mostly just w young women who made a difference in the world before, I think they were 18, before they really were like women. They, they're they young girls that really did wonderful things like Helen Keller and Anne Frank and lots of other people that I didn't really know about. And so this was really special. It's definitely one of those books that I think would be cute on a coffee table um, to have for people to see and read while they're just hanging out. Um, I think it packs a punch in such a simple accessible format and I just really enjoyed it. So I gave that four to five stars. I'm so thankful that I got that as an arc because it's definitely one of my new favorites and I'm definitely gonna get it for my apartment so that people can see what rad girls can do, okay? After that, I decided to read a couple of graphic novels and these were given to me by my boyfriend, Patrick. He loves this series and I decided I wanted to pick it up because I love the movie, Scott Pilgrim, and I read volumes one and two. And these are basically about a boy named Scott Pilgrim and he doesn't really know what his life is. He's dating a high schooler when he's like 25 <laughs> and he's just not living the life he wanted, but he meets this girl named Ram Ramona who comes into town and she's just, everything he ever wanted she's so different and cool and he starts to date her but realizes that she has all these evil ex-boyfriends that Scott has to fight in order to be with her so it's about that and it's really funny it's very witty and dry and I love that and I obviously love the movie so I'm really excited to continue with the series because so far it's already so great and it's also got a couple of things that aren't in the movie so I'm excited about that I also read volume three, I forgot. I also read volume three, so I've read three out of the six. Like I said, I'm not gonna tell you too much, but it's really cute and I'm really enjoying it. I'm really glad that I finally picked these up because he's been asking me to, and I'm finally glad that I did that because it's cute, I really like it. The next book that I read, I said I was in the middle of last time and I wanted to finish this month and I did, and that was Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the third and final book in the Illumine Files series and I just want to say I'm very sad that this series is over. I know this is a lot of people's favorite series, as is mine. I love this series so much. Um, but this final volume, even though I gave it four out of five stars, I just wanted a little bit more. It was just a little bit harder to get into. Um, the new characters didn't really do a ton for me. Um, I honestly personally like Gemina the best, which is the second one, um, because I really like those characters and I think it was a really great addition to the story. And while I did love this and I'm very sad to see this series go, I just wanted a bit more and a bit more of a final kabam, you know? Final action. So anyways, I am glad that I finished this and I have can say that I finished the series. I'm very upset that it's over. but. I don't know. I hope you guys will pick this up if you guys like sci-fi and interesting sci-fi character relationships, like war in space. It's fun, okay? I'm sure you've heard of it, but go check it out. And next are a couple of books that Patrick recommended me to read. He picked them out for my TBR, which was really fun. And I actually read two out of three of the books that he chose, which I'm very proud of. So the first one is a huge book that I've been meaning to get to forever, and I'm so glad I finally did because this is one of my all new favorite books and I think it's going to be one of my favorite series too and that is The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is about a girl named Evie who goes to New York and she discovers that she has these strange abilities as do other people in New York and some of her friends and those are called The Diviners and it is just really really fun. It's in the 1920s. They hunt demons and ghosts and it's basically like witty novels has said on her channel great gatsby mixed with like unsolved mysteries or just things like that like ghost stories and ghost hunting in the 1920s like that you can't beat that and i just love the language of this she uses a lot of really cool 1920s slang and like 
language and I don't know I don't know how they talk is so fun I really really like it there's some really great um, diversity within this um, some great representation and let me just say I'm just so happy I finally picked this up I love it and I can't wait to continue with the series five out of five stars like I loved it I need to pick up the next one we'll see when that'll happen because your girl needs to go on a book buying ban but I'm still really happy I finally got to this one and the next book that I read that Patrick recommended me is Cloaked in Shadow by Ben Alderson. This is a book about a boy who is going to be, he's like summoned to work for the king um, and he is supposed to have these magical abilities like all these other people in this world, this fantasy world, um, but it's discovered that his magical ability is a little bit different than everybody else's um, and it's also about him dealing with his ex-boyfriend and this new prince that may or may not be interested in um, but it was so good if you don't know Ben Alderson is a youtuber on here and I will link him down below um, so when I heard that he was coming out with a book I was so excited so proud of him just really couldn't wait and this did not disappoint let me tell you I'm very proud of him I loved this I can't wait to continue on with the series um, yeah, also, if you guys want to try the audiobook, they have it on uh, Scribd. So I listened to it on Scribd, loved the audiobook. It had like a British narrator, really atmospheric. I really enjoyed it. If you guys want to check that out, definitely do. Um, but yeah, great. I gave this four out of five stars. I'm excited to continue with it and. It was just a great start to a fantasy series for sure. Next, I listened to an audiobook for a book that I knew I probably wasn't going to get to anytime soon unless I just decided to pick it up. So I found it on Scribd and that was Restore Me by Tejera Mafi. This is the fourth book to what used to be a trilogy and is now a series and that's the Shatter Me series written by Tejera Mafi. Um, so this is the book following the aftermath of those three books um, and it kind of discovers more about the characters, talks a little bit about what the plan is for the world and the, what is it called? The empire? The I, I I don't remember because I just didn't love this. I think I gave it... Oh, I didn't rate it. Yeah, I don't know what I would rate it, honestly. But this... It was interesting. I liked Tehera Mafi's writing. I think her characters and where she tries to go with them are interesting as well. Um, so... I liked it in that sense, but just the qual like the quality of the story just wasn't there for me. I was kind of bored. They kind of didn't do a lot in Sector 45, is that what it's called? Um, it was just not a lot happened, but I do like some of the new characters and I'm excited to see where she goes with them, um, as well as just seeing how these characters develop over time. Um, it's been a while since the last book before this came out, so I think she's kind of piecing together things that she never thought she would have to because I don't think she thought that there would be a fourth book and now that there is she's kind of reworking things um but I did not hate my experience listening to this like I went through it really quickly and um the ending was pretty powerful pretty exciting I'm excited to see what happens with that but other than that it was kind of just eh. so I think I would give it like a three star I didn't hate it so I would give it a three star I think the next book that I read was an ARC I got from Edelweiss, and that is I Am Still Alive by Kate Alice Marshall. So I have a review for this if you guys want to go check it out on Goodreads. Um, but this is about a girl named Jess who ends up being completely alone in the wilderness. No one is there. She's just with her dog. And she's having to live off the land and kind of figure things out for herself. She has to fish, she has to hunt, has to keep warm, find shelter all the classic survival things. Um, so this is definitely a very classic survival story. Um, and I did enjoy it. The writing was interesting. She went back and forth between telling what happened before she was stranded and then how she's doing after. I just thought it was a little bit dull because she'd go through like, I walked over here, I fished, then I ate the fish and then I cooked it. It, it just felt very like, step one, two, three, four, five. It didn't have a ton of like twists and turns like I thought there would be. Um, or just, it just didn't develop as much as I wanted to, but I did enjoy it. And I think that the ending was nice. It, it was, it was a difficult book to read at times because I really felt for her. I can't imagine being in her situation. Um, I'll also let you know that my, um, review is down below so you guys can go check out the trigger warnings because there are definitely some triggers in this book um but if you think that those triggers won't 
trigger you I would definitely check this out when it comes out this comes out let's see it came out it already came out July 24th um so definitely go check this out if you like survival stories I think this is a great beginner introduction to survival stories um because it follows a girl that I think a lot of young adults can relate to um and yeah I don't know I I enjoyed it I gave it three out of five stars I'm happy that I read it and I'm really thankful that I had the opportunity. So the next book I decided to pick up on audio because I found it on Scribd and that's just kind of what happens for me. So I picked up Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. This is one that I've heard so much talk about. Books and Lala talks about it all the time and so I thought I might as well pick it up and now that I did I'm really happy because I really enjoyed this. This is about a girl whose best friend dies and people are suspecting that she committed a suicide um, and she was a part of a suicide pact. So they suspect that she is under a suicide pact with these other girls who committed suicide, but Lily, no, that's not her name. Mila doesn't believe that that's true, so she decides to um, use her Wiccan abilities that she, she's Wiccan, so she likes to practice, what is it called? She likes to practice Wiccan? Uh, mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a witch, I don't know. Um, but she decides to do that and she ends up bringing her best friend back and she's trying to get all the information from her it's really funny it's cute it's sad it's ooh. it's just there's a lot of emotions in this the the writing was really funny and there were some funny moments but also the material is dark so definitely trigger warnings in this as well um but I really enjoyed this. I've heard some people didn't like it as much, but I thought it was so fun and exciting and the characters were really interesting. All of them were very different. Um, so yeah, I gave this four to five stars. I'm very thankful that I read this this month because this was just kind of the book I needed. I needed something fun with like a darker twist to it and that's what this was. So yeah, I really like this. Next is a book that I read so quickly because it crushed me. I was crushed. I didn't think I was going to pick this up this month, but I did. Um, and that was Girl Made of Stars. As you can tell, I sticky tabbed a lot of things because this, this was rough. Like it was in, in the best way. Like the writing was incredible, but the quotes within this and the message behind it was so fabulous. This is about a girl named Mara and her twin Owen and they are as close as two twin twins, two twins could ever be. But one of Mara's best friends comes out and says that Owen raped her and um, it's a really difficult situation for both Hannah, for both Mara. One like quote that I really think um, puts this whole book into perspective is her saying, I need Owen to explain this because yes, I do know that Owen would never do that, but I also know Hannah would never lie about something like that. So it's about dealing with something this horrible happening to your best friend and believing her and supporting her and not knowing how to feel when that's your brother that's done something like this. So. I don't really know how to put this into words. I have tons of sticky tabs. If you guys want me to do a review on this, I will. I need to just gather my thoughts, but it was so great. I'm so, so happy I read this. Um, it made me so sad. It had so many great, mm, this is definitely triggering though. So I would leave um, the triggers down below as well because this is something that I think people need to know what the content is in this, but read this okay it's so good there are lots of things in here that i think are very relatable for everybody for so many people around the world um boys girls everybody like i think that there are so many things in here that people can grasp onto and take with them um so definitely pick this up if it won't trigger you i think it was just glorious glorious and the last book that I read this month was one that I own and it was from Book Outlet but I decided to listen to it on Scribd because I love listening to audiobooks as we know and I always do that before bed and so I decided to do this one and that is Maybe a Fox by Kathy Applett and Allison McGee. This is one that's hard to describe. This is about a girl and her twin, not twin, her a girl and her sister and her sister ends up disappearing one day and they don't know what happened to her. She's gone. They're both, I think, 11 and 12. Um, and so it's about her 
dealing with that as well as her father and their family and just how it all goes when um, such a young girl and person that they were so close to has gone missing. Um, and then it also follows a fox family and a bunch of foxes are born and there's this little girl fox that you follow and she forms a connection with the girl uh, Jules who um, is really struggling with missing her sister. So I don't know how to feel about this. This is middle grade. So I don't read a lot of middle grade. I really have a hard time with it just because it's obviously not catered towards me. So I don't really know what much to say about it, but I do appreciate it. I think I would have loved this as a kid or when I was a little bit younger. Um, and this I think was good, but it was also difficult for me to understand some of the things just went a little bit over my head and I feel like if I were 10 I would have been like what I don't I have no idea what that means or there were a lot of things that I feel like you were supposed to assume um you're not really told things specifically um and put it's not put in your face and as a kid like I wouldn't have known unless you told me um what was going on so <laughs> I don't know this was okay I think I gave it three stars it was good for a middle grade. I don't read a lot of it, so I don't really know what my rating scale would be, but I did enjoy it. I think it was really fast paced and um, it, it was special. I think that it had really good family values within this and also dealing with um, heartache with losing a sister. So that is it for all the books that I read this month. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you guys can like the video as well as subscribe. I'm putting out videos every week. Um, you guys can also hit the bell button if you guys want to be notified when I make my videos. And yeah, if you guys have any comments on any of the books I read this month, definitely let me know. I would love to talk to you guys about that and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!